In this video, we're going to continue to explore Euclid's algorithm and find the greatest common divisor written as a linear combination. And a linear combination is something that you will see over and over and over throughout your mathematical study, so make sure you pay attention. So I want to write, I want to find the greatest common divisor of 662 and 414. And then I want to use that to write the value as a linear combination. And a linear combination follows this format, where essentially I'm taking the two values times some other integer. And so it's kind of a longer process, but we're going to go through it together. And it starts with uh, the Euclidean algorithm. So I'm going to start with 662. And I'm going to write that as 414 times some number plus a remainder. And in this case, it's times 1 plus 248. And then I'm going to do the same for 414 and say how many times does 248 go into 414 evenly? One time with 166 left over. And then how many times does 166 go into 248? And it is one time with 82 left over. And then how many times does 82 go into 166? It is twice with 2 left over. And then how many times does 2 go into 82? And it is 41 times with 0 left over. And so essentially what I'm going to do is ignore the last one. And I'm going to start here. And I'm going to write it with respect to 2. So I'm going to say, 2 is the same as taking 1 times 166 and subtracting 2 times 82. And then I'm going to do the same here. And I'm going to say that 82 is equal to 1 times 248 minus 1 times 166. And then I'm going to write that 166 is equal to 1 times 414 minus 1 times 248. And then I'm going to say 248 is equal to 1 times 662 minus 1 times 414. So you might be thinking, OK, she's lost it. We've really just done all of this. And what was the point? But what I want to do now is I want to look at being able to write this in the linear combinations format. So I'm going to start with the one on the bottom. So we're going bottom up. I'm saying 2 is equal to 1 times 166 minus 2 times 82. So I've recopied this. And what I know is that 82 is equal to all of this stuff. So I'm going to rewrite it as 1 times 166 minus 2 times 1 times 248 minus 1 times 166. Now, really what I'm looking for is I'm not going to try to multiply it out to find a solution. Obviously, that would be working backwards. What I want to do is to be able to simplify this a little bit. And so essentially, I'm asking, how many 248s do I have? And how many 166, 166s do I have? And so here I can see that I have, if I distributed the negative 2, I would have, I was going to do that in a different color, I would have negative 2 times 248. And if I distributed the negative 2 here, I would have a negative 2 times a negative 1, which is positive 2 times 166. But I also have this 166 over here. So I have 3 times 166. 
and then I'm just going to continue that process. So now I have negative 2 times 248 plus 3 times, and instead of 166, guess where I'm going with this? 3 times 1 times 414 minus 1 times 248. And then I'm going to do some simplification. So again, I'm not going to multiply it out and add them together, or subtract them, etc. I'm asking how many 248s do I have and how many 414s do I have? And so I can see that in 414s, um, I have 3 times 414. And in terms of 248s, I have a minus 3 and a minus 2, so minus 5 uh, 248s. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. So I'm going to say, well, this is 3 times 414 minus 5 times all of this. So 1 times 662 minus 1 times 414. And then again, I'm looking for how many 662s and how many 414s so that I have it written in the proper format. I'm running out of colors. Oh, orange will work. So now I'm saying how many 662s? Well, I have negative 5 times 1, so I have negative 5 662s. And how many 414s? I have negative 5 times negative 1, so positive 5, plus another 3, so plus 8 414s. And that would be my final answer. So this is how I would write the greatest common divisor of 662 and 414 as a linear combination. So let's take a look at one more practice together just to make sure we know what we're doing. So again, I'm going to start just by writing the 252 and doing using the Euclidean algorithm to break this down to find the greatest common divisor. And so I've got 252 equals 198 times 1. Um, plus 54, and then 198 is the same as 54 times 3, plus 36, and then 54 is the same as 36 times 1, plus 18, and then 36 is the same as 18 times 2, plus 0. So just as we did before, we ignore the one that is plus 0, and we have in fact found the greatest common divisor is 18, but what I want to do is rewrite these in terms of the remainder. So this turns into 18 equals um, 1 times 154, I'm sorry, 1 times 54 minus 1 times 36 and 36 turns into, let me use a different color, so 36 turns into 1 times 198 minus 3 times 54 and 54 turns into 1 times 252 minus 1 times 198. So these are the equations that we will use and we will start at the end. So we're starting here and working our way up from here. So I start with 18 equals 1 times 54 minus 1 times 36, but instead of 36 I'm going to write 1 times 198 minus 3 times 54. So I'm just doing some substitution. And again, what I'm looking for is how many 198s. So if I took negative 1 times 1, I would get negative 1 times 198. And then I'm looking for how many 54s. And I have 
negative 1 times negative 3, which makes positive 3 54s, plus another one, which makes positive 4 54s. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say negative 1 times 198 plus 4 times, and instead of 54, I'm writing all that 54 is equal to. So it's just a lot of substitutions. 1 times 252 minus 1 times 198. And then I'm saying how many groups of 252 and 198 do I have? And I have 4 times 1, which is 4 groups of 252. And I have 4 times negative 1, so that's negative 4 plus negative 1, so that's negative 5. And I could either write minus 5 times 198 or plus negative 5 times 198. And that is my linear combination. So we have just used the Euclidean algorithm and written our greatest common divisor as a linear combination. And Bezu's theorem says essentially that. Bezu's theorem says that, hey, we've got Bezu's coefficients that basically says if we have a and b that are positive integers, then there exists some number s and t, some integer s and t, such that we can write the greatest common divisor as sa plus tb. And so essentially what we have done is do the work to find the 4 and to find the negative 5. Coming up next, we are going to solve linear congruences using the inverse.